Welcome back everybody to the I-League season number 2, the Southeast Asian qualifiers. This is the final for it, Rave versus MVP Phoenix in this best of 3 series where Rave, well, they have to win this game now, otherwise it's gonna be all over for them. If they win this though, there's still one match or one map to be played, but we're Hefla TV, your English coverage, I'm Coach here once again, I'm joined by Hefla Moak. Do you think, can Rave do this? Yeah, just ban Void. Like seriously, get get rid of Void. Like you have to ban him. There's there's no other way around. Like four have played a nice Void. Like he only failed on one Chronosphere. But to be honest, it was one of those Chronospheres where you said like, I mean, hey, I'm a Aganem Scepter Void. 60 seconds, and we were not planning on like pushing right now. So I might as well, you know, just try and get that puck. I mean, that that Chronosphere was supposed for Chrissy. Uh, well, it it didn't really work out. But that was the only mistake he did. All the other Chronospheres, especially the last one. The last one was just amazing. I mean, four people into the Chronosphere, three men ice blast, psi plates going uh, to two, like through two of here of the heroes, and one of them was even doomed up. So that was like, if death was any any more certain than this, then I don't know. Like that, that was just pure disaster for Rafe, especially because they all got caught out with, uh, say it, without buyback. So that whole scene we saw in, in the last minute of or two minutes of the game, like one team fight, two Rexes, and then just yeah, the Walking Dead mode. It was all because of that void. Well, Rave do ban out the void. That's the second one. So MVP Phoenix, they also banned out the Batrider. I do believe it was like Brewmaster plus I don't even remember who, but I don't think Batrider was in the first ban phase last time around. But Rave, oh yeah, it was the Chikiro instead of the Batrider by MVP Phoenix. So Rave, do they go for the Chikiro or do they start with the Lycan once again and just hope to get Chikiro as the second one? Nope, first pick Chikiro. Yeah, first pick Chikiro. So they're going back to what we saw already in the other games. And I think now that the Faceless Void is out, I don't think they have to fear anything. I mean, Chrissy on the Chikiro, playing aggressively, going for the objectives. They don't have to fear Chronosphere. So, yeah. From now on, the draft is, is all open. It, it really, the, 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 the face of it was kind of like the bus kill in the last game. I mean, sure, it was a guaranteed win and everything, but it all came down to that corner sphere. So the fights were not really representing like the skill level of both teams, but I mean, it comes down to the draft, which is ignoring a face of void. It's something you just can't do. So MVP, right now they use quite some time, just as Rave did. Reserve time is already ticking for the first picks, and we have to see. with. The good thing is with both of these teams, we can see the direction of the draft relatively early. But for now, they can secure a lot of the good supports. There is the Ogre, there is the Vengeful Spirit, but pff, what am I talking? Hefla, go home, because it's an Io and a Prisobac combination. It's a combination that they ran yesterday as well, at least for one game. and It was hugely successful. It was a Prisobac Io offlane completely owning a tri lane that was set up against them. So yep. they're probably going to go for some form of dual lanes once again. Prisoner IO, off lane, just somebody plus one safe and just really anybody solo mid. They could go for a temporary assassin once again as well if they wanted to. Lots of minus armor going to help Prisoner back just with the quill spray, of course, and whatnot. Although temporary assassin against Jakiro may be a little bit scary, but it has been done before, like you also mentioned during the draft of game one, I believe. So we'll see what MVP Phoenix wants to set this up, but they're definitely known to play the IO. Yeah. I mean what what is a, what does a prison back actually need in a lane? Like mostly mana. That's that's just a fact. You definitely need mana. Like the more mana you have, the more damage you do. Especially if you get your enemy in an awkward position where maybe he shows aggression, you get some uh, quill spray procs just by damage and then you do the rest by, by actually triggering them. And even the the first some levels of the quill spray already hurts if it stacks up to like three, four, five, and I don't even want to talk beyond that. And the IO makes at least sure that you always have that mana. Plus, if you get in trouble, also healing you, of course. So I, I can see the power in a Prisoner back IO combination. But for now, Rafe, of course, with these drafts, they, they have quite some options to go for. There's still an Ogre out there. They get their favorite heroes for now. I mean, Jakiro on Chrissy, Cast playing the Witch Dog. That's what we saw in so many games, and it always worked out. But then again, MVP is, is a different caliber of a team. You saw that in game number one. Rafe took it lightly. Maybe he's still surfing on the wave of wins they had recently. But MVP, they finally hit pretty much a threshold where they're like, you guys, we have to draft seriously here. And that's what they're going to do right now. Both teams focusing on banning out cores. And we start with the really heavy ones. I mean, PA being banned out as well as 
the anti-mage, the faces void is already out. What's coming next? Like get all, rid of all the cores, go ban Lycan. I, I might ban out Medusa if I was Rave at Medusa. this point. I mean, anti-mage, you it doesn't really signify immediately a Medusa, but Medusa would be just excellent. I mean, Io with Prisoback is good, but Io also providing mana to the Medusa. It's just almost like endless life with the mana shield, especially if you have arcane boots as well. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see uh, a Dusa working out obviously for MVP, but Rave is banning the Ember, and I could have also seen a Morphling on MVP side because why not? You have IO, you can either come with the Prisoner back or with the Morphling. Shotgun would actually be not too bad in this game to be honest. I mean, you have a Witch Dog, you can blow him up quite easily. The Jakiro, well, he's gonna rush into the Yule Scepter as like a standard thing, and they're gonna ban the Naga, and I think that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, Naga, I didn't even think about it. Like that's what happens if I'm still half asleep in the morning here. But um, yeah, Naga, we saw it yesterday. The Naga by J.O. Was, was very nice. So banning it out, definitely a good choice. I mean, Naga is just so damn annoying, especially against squishy supports <laughs> like the I.O. usually is. MP now, going for the Ogre, I guess, not that squishy of a support at all. Definitely you would want to have some form of lockdown if you're up against a Witch Doctor. You, you just kind of need to stop his death ward. Otherwise, even a Bristleback with rather tanky might just end up dying to that. But I do believe they ran more or less the same lineup last time around. They ran the IO Bristleback. I do believe Medusa might have been the core for them that time around as well. Not too sure, but Ogre was definitely there for them. So, also Ogre, Bloodlasting up a Medusa later on in the game. Pretty sick combination, so... Not too yep. sure if they want to snatch it for themselves, maybe, or if MVP Phoenix even thinks about that hero. Well, we have we have to see where this one is going, because that Bristleback... It's it's gonna be sick because right now if if just the orc match I bloodlusts him up and we're talking later about the game or like later, later into the game and the IO of course as well like they add so much attack speed and movement speed healing everything on top of it and they take a slark I guess yeah like a, a core with a lot of mobility why not like holding people in place that's exactly what a bristleback needs we have to see what the bristleback goes for anyway because bristleback is one of those heroes who tanks up a lot but the only bad thing is that like with you can't really chase them unless you have like which which is nasal go up on a target and that needs at least one two stacks so the slow is kicking in properly we have seen actually Prisobax with the uh rod of Atos approach i like that one really really i definitely like that because it gives you exactly the time you need to go to a target, get the Vicious Nasal Ghoul up. By the time the debuff of the Rod of Atos fades, you have so much Vicious Nasal Ghoul up on it that it, there's no difference in the slow. So you definitely get that one target, plus, of course, all the Quill Spray damage. However, following the Slack, we have a Dusa now for Rafe and also the Vengeful Spirit. We didn't even talk about this one. So right now, we have a nice setup for the Death Ward. And to be honest, this Death Ward might actually do a lot this game. Because what does stop the Death Ward at the moment? Ogre Magi. Yeah, it's definitely going to be rather scary for them, especially if there's the Stone Gaze at the same time. Stone <laughs> Gaze, if you get petrified, you take 100% extra physical damage, which is pretty much what the Death Ward is about, physical damage. So, nice combination there. Wave of Terror to boost it up even further. They also have some tower pushing with the Chakiro. Lots of lockdown on themselves, Paralyzing Cask, the mis Magic Missile, Ice Path from the Chakiro. So, they definitely have a pretty damn solid lineup, and as MVP Phoenix picked up the Slark, I think that was actually the one that they ran last time around as well. Yeah. So they're, they're going for a draft that has worked out for them in the past. Of course, Rave pretty much doing the exact same thing. I do believe it was like kind of an aggressive try lane with the supports plus I think it was Rior maybe on the core with Chrissy was like Shakiro safe lane and Cheo was Medusa mid lane last time around for them. Yeah. We have to see what they pick now as the fifth one. I can, I mean, since we already have two cores and everything, what about a big fat ultimate? Like, I could even see a warlock here if you really want to get that core prison back through, like a racking ball, bl bloodlusted, oh, the overcharge coming up, all the heals on him as well. Pr probably the the mech carrier, or pipe carrier, something like that. Then maybe with the shadow word on him and a big fat ultimate. I can, I can totally see that coming, but. Let's see what's what's there, because the Titan is already out, so there's no Ravage. We have to see. They, they definitely need more Lockdown. I mean, with the Fire Blast, the Ignite, and the Pounds, and of course, maybe some Slow by Prisoback and Io, but this is not really the most CC you can actually get into a trap, so I want to see more. I definitely want to see more there. They kind of need more as well, or at least they would do well to get some more CC for themselves. 
Oh god, it's what hero would fit though perfectly? Considering their laning, I guess it's like Io Bristleback off lane. Might be Io Bristleback mid lane as well. I've seen some teams run that combination. So Slark might be solo mid, might be solo safe lane, depending on what they think they're gonna go up against. Otherwise, I, I think they're gonna pick up some sort of a mid laner, maybe. Puck could be one if they want to go even more aggressive. Would have the Silence and the Dream Coil, both of them able to stop the Death Ward, for example. So might not be too bad of an option. Plus, of course, Dream Coil to keep people in the prison <coughs> back range. But nope, will be a okay. Death Assassin after all. That's quite interesting because this is, is again one of those games where MVP is first of all picking very greedy, and the second thing is that TA I, I don't like it. You have a Witch Talk against it. You have a Shakira against it. Like all the dudes are uh, switch shots taking like reflection charges off. It's not. It's it's a game where reflection charges won't be uh, that good, but then again, well, they play a triple core here where the prison back is gonna be super um, aggressive and like he's gonna be the wrecking ball in all those fights. They're gonna send him in front, taking up everything, and we have to see with the Slark and the Temple Assassin. The longer the game goes, the more I think this draft is gonna shift towards MVP Phoenix uh, society. And we have a Dusa Viper combination as cause for Rave, and of course Chrissy's Chikiro, so they might get early game wise at least the objectives done. But I'm not quite sure when they hit that kind of, I don't know, wall of MVP turning it around just by the fact that they have like a greedier draft. So let's see where this one is coming. Also, what I wanted to say, uh, Cast, I'm looking forward to this Witch Dog because I think this is one of the games where you definitely want to have a Maledict. Because you need that Maledict on uh, on the Prisoner back. Because like the normal damage on the Prisoner back with all the healing and all his movement speed and attack speed and whatnot, it probably won't be enough. If, we, if they actually play that style that he goes through as a, like a Wrecking Ball, tanking up everything, then a Maledict hit and then directly focus on him probably will do it. Because that will punch the damage over the line where even the Io can't counter heal it. So, would you just like to see a Maledict build rather than a maximum output or restoration? Yes, yes. Here, because I don't think you can outheal this. Like, you, you have to answer with a lot of damage, especially because they picked so greedy. That makes them, yeah, kind of vulnerable against, like, uh, a maximum damage burst. You have minus armor, you have stuns, you have slows, you have damage over time, uh, some random stun as well if you, I don't know count in the paralyzing cast and the maledict would i think do the trick this is one of the games where i would support it either way for all those who just joined here this is mvp versus rave mvp is one game ahead and now let's just introduce them really fast this is the grand well it's actually not the grand final it's the sort of grand final of the qualifiers but there is no loser bracket winner bracket whatsoever you either qualify or you go home and for both teams that's on the line it's only a best of three so if mvp wins they are in and Rafe is out. Rafe doesn't want to have this happening, obviously. So I'm looking forward to game number three. But for now, just the runes are being taken and let's make a super quick introduction of the players. So MVP March playing the offlane Bristol Black, probably supported by Ryzen on Yayo. Leaving QO once again on the mid lane Temple Assassin with Forever on the safe lane Slark. And last one will be Heen on the Ogre Magi. Yep, and let's see what we got on the other side. Chrissy on his famous Shakiro. I definitely like him on that Shakiro. Ryo again in the mid, of course, on the Viper. We saw that already today. Cast on the Witch Talk. We talked about it. I want to see Maledic. Please, chat, spam Maledic. <laughs> Go. Ninja Boogie is going to be on the Vengeful Spirit. And of course, we have J.O. on the Dooza. And there's already the first opening here. There's the stun. It's not... Well, oh, is this enough? Well, the IO is doing really the best. He's going to proc that self, but you saw how close this was. On the other side, however, we have pretty much the same. We have no pounds left, but Chrissy took about 50% damage as well. He has to use the Tango. What a fast start. We're just like 50 seconds into the game. We already have two lanes engaging into little brawls. Well, that's exactly what you like to see as well, but I think Rave had the support just been like so-called stutter stepping, like right click, step, right click. I think they might have gotten the last right clicks in as well, especially Witch Doctor. Pretty good attack range and attack animation for him. Yeah. But still forcing out a healing cell early on is also a win in itself, because Bristol Black, as he's not getting any last hits, he's not going to have like a ring of health or anything to just sustain him in the lane. Maybe Io with the fast bottle might be enough. Who's trying to die to the ancients or never mind, just wanted <laughs> to lose some HP so yeah. that he could bottle up and reach enough QO. <laughs> this is just getting some punches to be more effective in the healing, that's pretty much all about it. And oh, Ninja Boogie, they saw this, they were like, hey, the Io just left the lane, he has to do something, he's probably not stacking anything in the jungle, so it has to be Ancients. So Ninja Boogie with a very, very nice reaction here, going instantly for that uh, sentry ward, and that's of course no more stacks for you, Ryzen. Ryzen, however, well, he... 
they're looking at the rune at the moment. It's Ninja Boogie versus Ryzen, but of course it's range versus not so much range. And Ninja Boogie, he found that ward, so they're gonna get here 50 gold as well. Well, Rio is like, okay, I'm gonna take that 50 with me. Yeah, look at Rio already out of mana as well. He's been spamming so much poison touch against QO to get rid of the reflection charges and well, kind of try to slow down the Temper Assassin any way he can. Looking at the last hits though, 9 and 4 on the yard compared to 4 and 6 QO. So QO has like a couple more denies, but it's looking better for the Viper than it did in game number 1. Although, it's going to be rather low on mana unless the Ring of Passy is flying out, which, well, not flying, but walking out at, the po at this time, but... <laughs> Till three minutes, it's all walking. You know what I'm surprised about? Is that the Prisovac is actually left alone. Now that Ryzen is trying to give the TA a smaller advantage here. I mean, in the last game, that didn't work out when he was playing the AA because he fed twice in the mid. But oh, March, March, what you doing? Like, if he eats more of those right clicks, like, he's completely out of regeneration. So from now on, everything he gets as damage is pretty much permanent. He has to somehow get the IO in on the lane. Uh, to make healing possible, but what they need is an initial stun. They need the magic missile up on him, and well, they, they don't find it at the moment. In the mid Rio, having quite some trouble here, of course, with the Temple Assassin being permanently healed up, so he doesn't care too much. But yeah, the Prisoner is is the, the loser of all this rotation here. I thought they're really gonna go for a permanent IO Prisoner lane, so the Prisoner can be aggressive. It's not happening. But oh, Chrissy. What's Chrissy doing? There's the stun. There will be the pounds. And while he's quite low, he has to run. But with the ignite, there's no way he can run. This is our first blood. There's nothing, absolutely nothing he can do. You never want to feed away a first blood to a Slark. Slark is a heavy momentum based hero. And if you get off to a good start, you might even see like a Shadow Blade being built on a Slark every now and then. I do believe I saw one game with it. And they completely crashed. Slark got off to a slow start, but up against Prude Mother. Went for a Shadow Blade, started getting solo kills, started kill killing Spiderlings left and right. QO though, gonna damage Ninja Boogie a little bit, waiting for the rune to come, picks it up as well. So easy bottle for him and with Ayo supporting the Temper Assassin mid lane, it sure as hell hurts March on the Bristleback, but at least kind of secures oh, the Temper Assassin start. Like Forth was using the self because he took quite some damage here, he still gets of course the, the Liquid Fire Harass plus of course the Breath, he went for that super aggressive build with that Ice Path. But yeah, he has to be careful. Like Raisin is there, but yeah, Raisin is just too elusive. He actually tethered up to Siege Grandship. Oh, but in the mid, the TA is actually in trouble. No reflection charges, no nothing left. He's trying to turn it around with a melted, but nope, this didn't really work out. Too short of the HP there. Viper is gonna get the revenge in the mid as soon as the IO was gone. And talk about the IO, now finally with the Prisoner back, the lane that was supposed to happen. Cast might be oh, might be getting caught out here. There is the cast, it's actually bouncing. That's, of course, a bad thing to happen, but still, they slow cast and they can follow it up here. Look at March's HP, it's not really moving, so cast is definitely going down. The question is, do they find a turnaround? Nope. Like, the Ninja Boogie, he didn't even have mana for the Magic Missile, so his rotation would have been quite useless there anyway. It's just the combination is so damn strong. Sometimes they've gone for it even earlier, for the aggression like that, but... Four points into the Bristleback, definitely enough for him, or for them to just go for the kill like that. I do have to say the Paralyzing Cask, it must have been like max range when it bounced oh, like four that. Oh, bottom. He actually missed his pounds and now of course he's in trouble. He's getting tons of HP but he has his ultimate. Just when in doubt you have your ultimate and of course you can always hide into the trees to the right, being out of sight and regening up. I mean with the help of a Tango he has like 30 HPS and of course Chrissy can't really keep up with this. That's, well, that's kind of the unfair part of a Slark that dinged level 6. I mean Slark is just such a silly hero. At, at least early on, I mean, level 1 in Shadow Dance, not the greatest, at least compared to a level 3 Shadow Dance, not the greatest HP regeneration percentage wise. Also, this early on, you don't have the greatest health pool, so it's really based on your health pool. Once you get an Eye of Skyde, though, it's gonna be just sick, and it's like 60 plus HPS. It's like, what? How the hell can you kill that hero? Early on, yep. doesn't have the most mana either to work with, it's like pounds, and suddenly you don't have enough for a Shadow Dance anymore. Oh now, and we have a haste shown on Heen. What is that? Is that a go in the mid? Rio at the moment pretty aggressive on a Temple Assassin, but there is the Psionic Trap. And if he's coming in, yeah, there we go. I mean, he's gonna get his Viper Strike off. They are on the tower, but Rio taking just too much damage. Where is... Yeah, they're gonna make it a 1-1 trade. Still, it's a call for support. Ninja Boogie at least getting some out of revenge and of course grabbing the experience here. The Temple Assassin, however, killed the Viper before he could grab experience or taking credit for anything here. So definitely a good trade for MVP at the moment. And I was just about to say it, before the Ogre crept the, the haste rune, like the last three rounds of runes went completely to MVP. A Wraith, usually a team that picks up the early runes quite often, but 
yeah, I, I noticed that yesterday. They kind of give up on the runes later on because it's just too risky to go in there. But if you have, for example, like a first item bottle IO and stuff like that, or a TA in the mid, I, to be honest, I think you should put more emphasis on those runes because you see what happens if, if just one of the supports gets the right rune, rotates in, translates instantly as a kill and reors down. That's the last thing you want, but while I'm talking like a waterfall, we have to start actually killing Chrissy so fast. Well, with the ogre coming in to help, it's enough to get the kill. Slark solo, it's really hard to kill a Chikiro actually. But with the help of an ogre, they got the kill. Also, while the mid lane kills were happening, oh, March but missile. Working. Top, there's a magic missile, and this time, oh, no, it, it should be enough. With that last cast flying out, that's an easy kill on the Pristle back. Without the IO, he's nothing but a punching back. A tanky punching back. Yeah, before with the IO, they did manage to just force out the TP of the Medusa, but still didn't get a kill. Medusa is level 6 even, and Geo, as per usual, just doesn't even go for Stone Gaze at level 6. Usually picks it up at level 7 just because he's getting into a lot of trouble, usually not having it. But he's gonna have it soon enough, I guess, and he's farming up reasonably well. 37 lasted. Even though the Bristleback has been around, Bristleback not that scary at this point, level 5, only has the power threads, and. Well, it's Ryzen's bottle on him at the moment. Not even having a bottle of his own. 17 last hits. I guess it's not that bad comparing it to the other offlaner, Chikiro, 13 last hits. So, farm wise, it's once again just rather even across the board. Yep, definitely. And, well, we have to see what's happening next. I mean, at the moment, those ancients that were stacked, like, they're still gonna farm it up. March is super low, so he has to be careful that there's no rotation, but rotation is on a TA at the moment. New refractions are up, but that won't help you melt. They have vision on you with that nice sentry board in the mid, so that's an easy kill. Sure, they're gonna get this ancient stack, but, yeah, they're gonna pay with the TA for it. That's kind of bad news. And I'm looking forward to Chrissy... I don't know, doing something else, he has to. Yesterday he was super aggressive, dropping from lane to lane, but obviously he can't stay against Forov. Like, Forov on the Slark with the Ogre in the background, he just can't stay there. You will repeatedly die all the time. Well, yeah, last yesterday I think it was up against a Tidehunter, I believe, and he just completely crushed that matchup, 1v1. Just Liquid Fire, non-stop. But yeah, like I said, with the Ogre backing up the Slark, he just stuck, first of all, got a slight level advantage early on just because the support were around. So that was already enough for the Slark to get a slight upper hand mid lane. Oh, there's the Fire Blast, gets the multicast with the Ignite to follow, slowed down by the Psionic Trap, and Kiwo picks up the kill on Rior. So nice kill, 5 to 4 all in all. Oh, for but top, it's still going. Ahio is super low, but now March is also in trouble. So in the end, this is gonna be a Viper trade for two in the top line. Not the most optimal trade, but sure, I mean, the TA might get at least something done on the tier. One tower, but talking about tier one tower, I think they, they they definitely gonna push now with Chrissy around the corner here. We have liquid fire spam on the tower that should do it, and four of I don't think you can do anything at least not alone. Probably not. I mean, I'm not too sure if MVP men want to just focus and come into the mid lane. They're gonna get the mid or into the top lane rather. They might get the kill on Rior, another Fire Blast gets another multicast as well. He will gonna run away though just because of the Viper Strike coming out. Oh, but, but Heen! Look at Heen's position, now he's gonna get followed up here and with the level 2 poison attack, that should be an easy kill. Yep, even the Wisp can't really change it. Cast was ready to get for his little random stuns out, but that wasn't even needed. Like the Viper making a nice turnaround and in the end, this was supposed to be a kill on the Viper, but it ended up in a disaster for MVP. So, I mean, it's just the Ogre being fed away, but at least that gives Ryo some sort of revenge sense here of his mid lane, because so far he was the one taking and not the one actually dishing out all the damage. But let's see, we have a rotation in the mid that is March, actually. In combination with Ryzen, we have to see, because there is also four of looking into it. It's a two versus three situation at the moment. Yin is the one rotating top but well an ogre he can't really do anything sure he's casting fire blast on on chrissy but he can't stop this assault on the tower yeah, oh but bottom never mind that ninja boogie found by the ta is there a magic missile yes he has enough and there's even the cast flying out i mean they, they they're not going to be able to kill him but well they managed a nice tps here by jo and by chrissy in the end both of them are four is not going to find any of those kills in the top lane so it's only Heen dying, no, uh, Rior dying in the mid and also the tier 1 going down just like the top tower. But wow, this was free lanes and free engagements. So much chaos. Well, they might have come out slightly ahead just because they lost the Viper, but a tier 1 tower gives just you more gold than that. Of course, you don't want to give any gold to Bristleback, who's gonna have his mech suddenly finished almost. 
Just the last I looked at him one minute ago, only had the buckler now, almost has the entire mech finished. Viper though, has his own mech as well. Rather even that way, although there's no power trades yet on the Viper. Yep. But pretty back getting tankier and that's somewhat of a very for Ray, but then again... Medusa, the highest farmer in the game. Not too sure how happy MVP will, will be about that. Well, we have to see, because the Dusa is definitely something that can stop MVP's assault, but at the moment MVP, they do the right thing, because they say like, guys, they have a Chikiro, they're gonna be aggressive if they can, oh, we have to see, but Forov, Forov is looking for it, there is someone in the mid who could come, it's Heen joining the fight, but, I don't know, like, this is this is a bad idea, stacking around here, Slark, he's losing quite some XP and time by, by being there, his entire team is not in range, but we have a double damage TA, so if they really want to go for something in the mid, this might be a big fight. Psionic Trap just as a harass. The Dusa already come in, but Forov. Forov joined the fight as well as the relocate here. Forov didn't found anything with the pounds yet. Now he's focusing on Cast. But there's the Death Ward and all the stuns. It's really massive damage at the moment. March, it wasn't enough to actually kill him. So for now, everybody is still alive. The IO, the Light Bulb, is the first one to fall. But now, double damage TA is going to work. Chrissy trying to do as much as damage as possible. But the problem is, yeah, double damage. It's just too much damage. And Cast being slowed. Forov not finding anything with the pounds. He's actually getting slowed. He doesn't have his ultimate, so you gotta be careful here. Slark, you're still a fish. You're still dying when it's true tried. We don't have anything as in stuns left. And that's pretty much the escape of the TA, but... Wow. What a, what a fight. What a bloodbath. Well, in the end, if you look at the fight recap, in both XP and net worth, it was a slight advantage to Rave. Although I wouldn't have thought it just because they lost kind of two cores and only gained the core and support. MVP though, no need for them to chase that far as it is, so they kind of gave away the Slark kill for nothing. At least managed to purchase up the Blink Tagger before. And the thing is that when they relocated in, they broke the tether immediately, Ryzen backed off whereas March went straight in. So yeah. they lacked quite a lot of just tether regeneration from that. I don't believe they... Well, the mech might have come out when the tether was back once again, but... They it just was pretty it close even bit. for March. You, you, you saw that, like the Death Ward did so much damage actually on him, so that was quite a surprise. If March would have died earlier, I don't think MVP would have chased that much, but well, they did after all, and well, let's see. Rafe is exactly back where they started with this fight. This time the runes are not as lucky with the double damage for the TA, so they're just gonna continue here on a tier 1 assault, and of course with Liquid Fire on Chrissy, like it's just a matter of time. At the moment it's a 2 versus 5 situation in the mid, well, they're gonna play around with the illusions a tiny bit, and they're gonna get the tower. Four of a bit under attack, but Rave, they got what they came for. They wanted the tier one tower. Now the question is, what they do? Like, is there a rotation top? Uh, they're smoked up, so they might do. What do they do? Four of oh, being swapped here. Does he get his ultimate off? No. Yes. Never mind. He gets the ultimate off, pouncing. But there was a maledict on him, and it's still ticking. It's still ticking. But oh my God, Shadow Dance regeneration is stronger than the maledict. Jesus Christ. That was so damn clutch. Had he taken like 50 extra points of damage before getting the Shadow Dance off, he would have been dead. The Dark Pact is just such a gay spell. That's all I can say it. <laughs> I mean, really, he gets rid of all the stuns. He got rid of you in the Ice Path stun. Had the Ice Path come out like half a second later, still would have stunned him and I don't think he would have been able to outrun it just because he almost even got body blocked. He was just... He, he was in the middle of five enemy heroes for God's sake. Yeah, Shadow still Dance. As I said, I mean, the Maledict is something you can't get rid of as a Slark, I mean, with, with even Dark Pact, so there was just a tiny bit more damage needed, but somehow the chain stun, it didn't really work out, he got it off, and that was really the bad I, the bad thing to happen, like, they, but they blew everything into him, it's not like they could have done anything more, except for Death Ward, maybe, but everything else was there, we had Liquid Fire, we had Dual Breath, the Wiper Strike, then all the right clicks possible in the world, it, it just, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. So the Slark at the moment, even though he doesn't have the most tanky items, only PTs, Aquila, and a full stick, but Shadow Dance is something that just protects you very well. Well, now he he's not farming that well though. I mean, he's still number two in net worth, but after the Blink Tiger really hasn't found himself anything. Although he's being rather aggressive for a solo Slark. I guess with the last escape, he's like, yeah, I can take on the entire team. I don't care. I'll go for solo kills left and right. But QO is working towards, once again, I would think it's going to be a Desolator. So he definitely just dislikes defensive items, I think. <laughs> oh, well, we have to see. I mean, sometimes going directly for the damage is the, the best approach. And to be honest, PKB wouldn't do him too much good. Viper Strike goes through it, Stone Gaze goes through it of the Medusa. But for him, once to come in what from is behind, Stark doing here at the moment? He's just showing 
and then he's going back. But I think they're well aware that like this is not a full assault. But we might have to relocate. March is grouped up here with Ryzen. They're ready to group uh, like come in. But TA is also not there as well as Ka uh, Heen on the Ogre. Nope, this is not happening. They're just gonna trade a tier 1 tower for a tier 2 tower, it seems. Even though March, of course, the right clicks off a pressure back, they are not too overwhelming. In the end, they're gonna take, I don't know, a lot of tower tower damage here. I don't know if that's really a good trade. Tier 1 tower for a tier 2, damage on both, mid and top. <sighs> Rave has to answer faster here, but at the moment, they're, they're coming in. Oh my god, and the Viper is alone here. There's the Slark, pounce right on him, but March took so much damage here. Will there be a relocate out? No, never mind that fourth. However, well, he's using his ultimate at the moment. Nice swap out here by Rio, but the TA is just snatching it away. Cast still cast in like a man, and <laughs> Mio is coming in, just finishing the job, and fourth, fourth coming back in, full HP. Jesus Christ, nerf Slark, like how he got that HP so fast back. In the end, it's a 3 for 2 trade. The tower is not in the eye range yet, but whoa, I mean, nice death ward. The death ward really saved the day for Rafe. That could have been way, way worse. Yeah, and although they've lost 3 and MVP only 2, net worth and gold wise, it was still pretty much even just because they lost 2 cores on MVP side. And Bristleback, he made a huge mistake there as well. Miscalculation, or rather, IO didn't come in close enough soon enough. Had he gotten the double mech through onto the IO with the tether onto back onto himself, he would have survived that. And yep. it's just the biggest mistake for them in the draft, I think, was just only having that one stun from the Ogre. And we talked about it as well, the death ward probably <coughs> going to have a lot of value this game, and we just saw it right there. Yeah, we, we definitely saw it right there. And and I also like the, the swap. I mean, the Vengeful Spirit did exactly what she was supposed to do, trying to save the Viper. Too bad the TA came in at the right, uh, really, at the right angle. It was like... Typical movie drive-by shirt, window open, bang bang, and that was the end of the wiper there. Like it was just a small intermezzo for <laughs> the TA. Nothing he can do there. But still, we, we saw that Rafe definitely has the potential to like somehow prevail on those fights. But we have to see. MVP still has an advantage. When you look at the graphs, I don't know if you showed it to the viewers already, but we have like what heading towards the 7.5k in experience. We are having about 5k in gold, and this gold advantage they have right now is with three towers denied. So there's a lot less gold they actually have. But now we have a smoke. We have a smoke by MVP. It's four of again in the front lines. Like so far, he always got his shadow dance through and the escape. But is this really for Roshan? Oh my god, this is for Roshan. And Rafe is just around the corner, but they, they are not there for the Roshan. Or for any defense. They are here for the Ancients, and they are going to take tons of cr damage here on the Ancients. Which means, when the message pops up here on their screens that Roshan got been, has been killed, they are going to be like face bombing Big they, time. They are so close yet so far in some sense, and that's just easy ages with a Desolator Temporary Assassin now. He can feel so safe, like no BKB, doesn't even need the BKB, just goes in. Right clicks people down, especially the supports, I mean, they have no chance of survival really, even if a point booster on Witch Doctor, 1000 HP is nothing to a temporary session with a Desolator. Yeah, this is really bad news, I mean, you're taking a huge Ancient stack and right next to you, the enemy team is just smoking into Roshan and they're gonna be successful and you're not, you're not even fast enough to respond, maybe getting the Aegis directly off, they would have had, definitely, like a number advantage, even though it always looks on a minimap like this, but we must not forget, we have a relocate, in and Ryzen, that that little light bulb is always on the prison back all the time, and there's always a relocate in. So it might look like a three versus five, but the relocate makes it instantly a five-five fight. But let's see, four of now equipped with a new ultimate orb, so he's rushing directly into the Scotty. But we have to see what does he find here? Who does he find? Actually, he finds Cast. Cast is on a warding mission, I think. But in the end, no, he's not engaging it because the pounds didn't land. Well, I guess he might not have gotten the kill fast enough, at least not without the pounce landing there. He could have tried to chase him down, but without the IO squad you don't really have any means to slow, so you need to wait for another pounce, and it just takes a long time, and you were rather close to the enemy base at the time as well. But Medusa still farming up, gonna go for a Lincolns now. Lincolns in this game feels like one of the worst items. Oh, but look, Heen, they found Heen and that's so much damage, but they relocate instantly and Heen is gonna die at least from that Malatic damage, but at the moment, all oh, beautiful bounces here between March and the Wisp. That's the downside of, of it, but yeah, March is definitely going down. Cast probably has to feel the wrath of Fora. Fora still trying to get in, but he is ultimate, saving him. It's a two for one trade at the moment, and Fora, nice Yule Scepter, Chrissy, perfect timing here at the moment. He's trying to pounce out, but oh, it's not enough for the high crown, so run 
fishy run, and it seems like he's gonna manage it out. So elusive this hero, but in the meantime, Ryzen is coming back. Nobody's actually there top to punish him for that relocate. And we also have the TA still with the Aegis. Rior is still around, and I think the Slug is gonna reinitiate here. There's the Psychic Trap, giving Vision, giving the slow. Do they reinitiate the Ice Path, just making sure nobody follows. And maybe, oh, there's the Yule Scepter, and he's being slowed. Refraction won't help you against all this damage over time. We have no... Well, we have no magic missile at the moment on Ninja Boogie, but I don't think they need it. There's the vision they need, and oh god, he is surrounded. Four people just striving for your death, and you're landing directly into your ice path, and that's it. QO, this Aegis was not well spent. I mean, all in all, the last fight plus losing this Aegis as well, just a disaster for MVP. They were looking good, but suddenly things have gone downhill for them. Not too sure how much the overall swing will be, but I think the graphs will be rather close to zero. So Rave, getting a lot of farm, Temper is still the most farmed hero, but Medusa is catching up. Although still the Lincoln Sphere, I mean, just going straight Eye of Scotty would have been just so much better already. Kiting around melee heroes, which MVP have a crap ton of. Just Lincoln Sphere, one goo from the Bristleback will remove it. And what, what are you so afraid of? Is it really just the f one Fire Blast of the Ogre? I, I don't know. Like, like to be honest, this, this fight, like, MVP, they gave so much away. Like, regardless of, like, like small analysis, it was just this whole fall from back. Like, the the fact is, like, when you're on, next to your, like, secret shop, you're on high ground, looking down, like, it's even twice high ground. You look once down to the ancient platform, and then once down to the rune and rush pit, and they try to really, I don't know, catch someone from double low ground to high ground, and it's, it's, it's just a really weird engagement, to be honest. MVP gave away a lot. Look at the crafts, like, they're gonna get, gonna get instantly punished with, like, about 3k swing in both. Yeah, in XP it's a little bit more, maybe, or just about 3k, let's say it like that. Closing in on 4, but Slark, getting closer to his Eye of Sky as well, is about... 1k off of it. Needs the point booster as well as the Orb of Venom for it still. PKB gonna be built finally on QO. is like, yeah, screw these guys. I'm just getting wrecked in the fight. Ice Path, Dual Breath, just getting slowed down by really anything. But they still can group up and just go for it. I mean, they have the Crimson Scar finish as well, although Bristleback. Definitely not as farmed as I think MVP would have Oh, but they found QO here. Temple Assassin again, surrounded by so many people, but... Well, they're still March, they're still working on a TA, I don't think he's gonna make it, but look at the death ward, it's beautiful at the moment, doing so much damage, this is a full channel March, getting down all this tankiness, it doesn't really help you, Ninja Boogie is the one to fall, Templar Assassin, he doesn't have a Blink Dagger, so she's still surrounded here in the Rosh Pit, but at the moment, there's also cast coming in, beautiful, beautiful multicast here on Rio, he has to be careful, at the moment he's still living, but four of Make sure that was pretty much the last time, they don't have vision, now they have vision, the sentry ward just popping outside of the... Uh, Rosh Pit, Stark still alive, and does he want to come back in? I mean, Chrissy would be a target he could go for, but at the moment he finds Cast. There's still a pounce if he wants to land it, but there's an Ice Path slowing all down. Chrissy actually managed to get out of here, so they settled for the Cast kill. I don't know, who's the winner of this fight? I guess in the end, somewhat MVP because they got one more kill, but once again, it's losing two cores and getting that just one Viper down plus two support, so it's not that bad. Also, Medusa, he stayed alive through the, throughout the entirety of the fight. So it's probably another just rather even fight. I, I don't think anybody got like a huge advantage or anything. Forever finishes on his own now, Ayo Skadi, but Medusa also has an ultimate orb of his own now. <laughs> so it's just going lots and lots of back and forth. Although it looked horrible for MVP. That death ward, they really need to build like a Yule Scepter on Ayo or yeah. Ogre Yeah, They, they, they need a second, uh, a second possible intro. Maybe... I don't know, Basher, I like Basher into Abyssal Plate, Yule Scepter on the Io, on, on maybe even the Ogre Magi, something, but the Ogre Magi is far away from a decent farm, the Io is actually way, way more farmed than uh, the MVP Ogre here, like, they need a proper interrupt on that on that witch dog, otherwise he's gonna have a blast. And this is even, this is without Arcanum Scepter, this is only a level 2 death ward, like, if, if this, if he was higher level, maybe even like a semi-farmer or something like that, that would have been a disaster, but at the moment, oh, he's running towards that invisibility rune, and QO is like, ah, eh, well, that's pretty much gone. Well, it's just... Risky, though. It was risky. Just imagine someone had vision there, or maybe a sentry ward around the, the rune spot, then cast would have been so dead. I mean, all in all, at the moment, MVP's biggest weakness has been lack of lockdown. They've been punished so much for it. Not only with the death ward, just so many TPs out as well from under their noses. 
If they only had like one more, they need Agony. If they really do want the Ogre Magi, Yule yep. Scepter might be an IO, but he's not building for it. Heaven's Halberd, I think, is to build for him. Definitely a good item to have up against Medusa, to be honest. Even a Viper who doesn't have a BKB at this point. So it's not a bad choice either, but you, you need to stop this Death Ward main. He's gotten like three, four max value Death Wards this game already. And to be honest, what we talked about in the draft... Oh, never mind. I'm gonna stop my thought here because I think we're gonna have a full-out fight here. Wait for it. Wait for it. The smoke. Finding... March. Yeah, they're gonna initiate here on March. He's gonna be locked down by the Ice Path. Of course, he's gonna take ton of damage, but Fourth is already coming in. Maledict on him, so he has to use his ultimate, the Death Ward, this time. It's not doing anything, so now Rave has to reconsider if they want to fight this Bionic Tap on pretty much everyone here for a re-engaging. There's the Dusa ultimate finally. Do we have petrification? Yes, on Kyo. We're gonna find this one cast still tanking it up. All the healing is going out, but Jayo, Jayo being super low. He has to get the hell out of here, but he's dying. This is gonna turn into a disaster. Rio is trying to make something work. This fight, maybe one kill, two kills. No, he's gonna settle for only one, but in the end also dying. The rest of them just TP'd out. Like... That was exactly the worst case scenario for Rave. What happens if four of engages, you try to trigger the death ward, and then everybody is gone, and your death ward cooldown is not doing anything. That's exactly what happened here. Huge disaster. It's still a two for three fight, but, well, the Dusa died. And maybe Ninja Boogie again here. Well, the Slark, Yule Scepter, buying some time for of is not gonna get this kill. But, well, it was, again, pretty close. Well, to be honest, considering how it started for Rave, I mean, they used the Stone Gates as well as the Death Ward for more or less nothing. I guess they got the Shadow Dance on cooldown, but that's about it. If you consider that, it was still a pretty decent fight for Rave. Just because MVP, they were fighting in the Macro Fire for so damn long. Ogre Magi, he was just standing in there. His right clicks were not necessary to bring down the Jakiro. Could have just backed off a little bit, thrown out another Fire Blast or something, rather than just stand in the Macro Fire. But they also get the Roshan, so that's a huge win for MVP all in all. Is this, is this the number 3 or is this number 2? It was number 2, I believe. It's 30 minutes and I don't believe there have been yeah, too many rotations. Yeah, this is, this is 2. Yeah, no, I was... I don't know. As I said, it's early morning here. <laughs> it's early morning. Like, it's math not early morning anymore. Ah, uh, well, for it, me it, it is. It might it may have been early morning when the series started, but... I work till 6 in the morning, so I'm up... Like, I had, what, That was early morning sleep? then. Ah, well, no, yeah. And no mercy with me. Either way, like... I actually wanted to say it before the fight broke out, but we w we've been right with two things. Like The first thing is we said there's hardly any lockdown for MVP, and that became actually true. That's the reason why MVP had so many bad fights in a row. But what's also true is that MVP's draft is way, way greedier, and we have the feeling right now. I mean, March has become tankier and tankier. Crimson Guard in those fights is just a nuisance. The TA finally like, dishing out tons of damage and also having a survivability plus... He received the Ages in the earlier fights and everything, and the Slark on top of it. And the Slark actually, look at the Slark, how greedy he is, but he doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He goes back and he comes back with full HP. That's 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 the biggest problem about the Slark. We have three cores versus a Dusa, but Law of Four of jumping here on Jo, maybe baiting out that ultimate, but at the moment the Slark under quite some pressure here. With the ultimate, he's still going in some bashes on Rior, but Rio, he wants to turn around here on March. March being oh nice swap here directly under the tier three tower. Is there a relocate out? Yes, there is. But at least they can punish on the Wisp. But I don't think MVP is gonna give this up. MVP, they're gonna go back. This was not even a relocate to the fountain. This was just a 2mm relocate, and they come come in with full blow here. Is there a cast pounds? Oh my god, cast. He's not gonna get anything done here, but there's the ultimate. Four of maybe paying for it now. And yes, he's going down, but protected by the Aegis. Ryzen, he's gonna pay the price for it. Rior, the last hit, but four of behind him, directly engaging the pounds already landed there. Still, four of standing here in the fire, and that's really bad news. He's going down. That's a killing spree, of course. It's a 2 2 trade for now. Plus the ages, and now March. We need something though. Psionic Track making sure they can't follow up on this, but wow, what a awkward fight actually on both sides. Well, the ages once again lost for pretty much nothing, just like the last time around. Last time around was the Templar Assassin losing in the tank twice, now it's the Slark. You wouldn't expect the Slark to die that easy, but really well played by Chrissy, another great macro player coming out from him. And it's just the fact that Rave. Whether you want to kill Medusa, whether you want to kill the Viper, they are just so ridiculously tanky. And Viper once again has the plate mail sitting on 27 armor. Even yep. with the Desolator and the Meld, it's just so hard to bring down. Still, I mean, this was an advantage fight by MVP due to the ages, and four have had some nice engagements. This was also an advantage fight simply for the reason that they got cast. 
out of position, which means there was no death ward whatsoever. It never got ready to cast or like channel on the any. Death ward was used thing. on the bristle back earlier when the relocate happened. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, but it was still out, and they they it didn't really have too much effect of the fight. What I don't understand is why Ryzen actually choose to. I don't know, relocate just some meters into the secret shop instead of going to the fountain, coming with full HP back on the Bristle. That might have been well, Bristle was something game deciding here. Bristle was pretty much full HP when they did come back. I guess the one difference is that there weren't any bottle charges anymore on IO just because yeah. of that. But I think they were kind of expecting maybe to get chased down there. If they had gotten chased by Rave, suddenly there still would have been five instead of just only three. So maybe they tried for like elaborate tactics of just baiting out Ray from their own base and trying to go for like a fight from the high ground at the secret shop or something. I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's one possibility. Still, like this game is so close. We're 32 minutes in MVP. However, they have a quite nice lead here on experience. Even though they got a kill on the Slark, it doesn't translate into much. Like even after this fight, it's it's pretty much even. The the craft completely stagnated even a tiny bit into MVP's favor by experience and goal. So at the moment we are hovering around the 10k mark on both crafts for MVP. And we have to see. Oh my god, Chrissy here on the Temple Assassin. Of course he can run, he has a plink dagger and that should do the trick, but Psionic Trap, never mind, he's gonna manage to plink out and that's pretty much it. But that's how aggressive at the moment the Temple Assassin is, and this is it's just getting even worse. As I said, free cores, free people that are tanky and dishing out tons of damage and only two calls on the other side for Rafe. So they feel the wrath of having, yeah, a greedy draft against you and going late game. Because this is going late game. At the moment, I have the feeling Rafe is going to fortify their base. They're going to get ready with buybacks as well. So I, I just don't see this happening. I mean, breaking high ground just right now. So let's say this goes to like 50 minutes plus. Who even has the better late game in that case? MVP, MVP all the all the way. Like they're just they're just one core up. Like the prison back is, is gonna get so awkward in those fights because killing him will take so much time that the TA and the Slark will do so much damage in the meantime. That's the problem. And if you ignore the Prisal, you might kill the Slark, you might kill the TA even. The problem is you're gonna pay for all, oh, but never mind. J.O. in the mid, already pounced by four of. There's a Yule Scepter. Do they wanna engage in him? I don't think that's a good idea because March is around, TA is rotating in. Nope, they're just showing that if they wanted to, they could anytime. Well, now MVP, they have one extra just big item for them. AC finished on the bristle back. HP pool wise, you're still not that great off on the bristle 1.8k. Isn't really all that much, but sitting on 33 armor as well. So getting pretty beefy, making your entire just lineup tankier, of course, making it rather easy for you to actually kill somebody with physical damage now as well. Yep, we have to see. I mean, Jo, I have Scotty and then all around just that, I don't know, Standard Lincoln Sphere with the Yasha. He needs more. He he definitely needs more. We need more items on Jo. Otherwise, they cannot prevail in those fights. The longer this game goes, the more demand is on the Dusa. That's the problem. And at the moment, I mean, the Viper is gonna be soon at sort of her cap, unless she's going for like damage items. But at the moment, it's just the Arcanum Scepter, like the Plate Mail again, the Yasha. But also, he has like so much, yeah, space to improve. And at some point, it might be even necessary to sell that mech and then just go for full out damage and whatnot. But let's see. At the moment, MVP takes the approach of farming their own jungle, farming the dire jungle, farming all three lanes. So experience-wise, they're doing so much of a better trade at the moment. Yeah, Rave really has been forced to play this extremely passively for more or less the entire game by now already. At least half of it. They've just been forced back by MVP. But they are smoked up now, they're looking for an opening of their own Ninja Boogie lead in the charge with a potential swap. They're gonna find QO. Oh, he uses himself! What the hell was that? And BKB TP out from TA. Although he oh, gets swapped get back swap. anyway. They get the swap, so this means like maybe Ninja Boogie is gonna die here, but the Temple Assassin is gonna pay for it. There is the hit on Ninja Boogie, he's still in the stun lock. Well, he's gonna get that kill. Is there vision on him? Yes, they have, and they're gonna settle for Ninja Boogie versus the TA, but in the meantime, they lost 50% on one tower already, four of us pushing top. This is going into like some split push game at the moment, but March, oh March being under attack, there is the TP attempt, but Chrissy is coming in, interrupting all that. March is going to go down as well. I don't know if this split push was really, really worth it, losing two cores for a bit damage on the tier 3 towers. I mean, sure, you can replicate this all the time and then go slowly through the base, but you have to be careful that Rafe is not getting too much off this. 
Yeah, it was really well done by Ray finding the TA like that. The Yule Setter though, extremely questionable by the Chakiro. I guess he double tapped it. He was just so excited to get the Temper Assassin kill like that. <laughs> In the end, the Ice Path gave them the vision, although it didn't stop the BKB TP from happening. There was the just swap to follow up. Now, Chakiro has his own Nagin Receptor done. Double Macro Pyre, just length and duration as well. So 14 seconds of Macro Pyre makes it pretty much impossible for you to fight on high ground. Just because Macro Pyre is going to cover pretty much everything of it. Yep. But then again, we have to question like how much damage does the macro pyre do? As I said, the longer the game goes, like with all this healing going around, I'm pretty sure March, for example, he's one of those heroes who could just stand the macro pyre at the moment and laugh it off. But let's see. In the mid, we're gonna have Rice, and he's gonna eat a wiper strike, but he should have a target too. Well, tether on, yes, it's four F. So he's gone, but the Viper is still coming, even though he's disarmed. Oh, the ice path is landing just on the edge, so Rice and is eventually still going down. That was unexpected. I thought like, oh, okay, Tether, they're out. So yeah, with the Io dead, is Rafe pushing forward now? It looks like it. The Ogre is farming at the moment in the jungle. He wants to finish his Arganum Scepter. That's what he's up to. And actually, oh, he needs 120 gold. 120 gold, and we have a second stun on the Ogre. That's bad news for Rafe, because that gives them finally the CC we were looking for. But for now, it's just a tier 2 tower push. Of course, some gold for Rafe. And oh, nice swap here on a TA. They have vision on a Ninja Boogie exploding with a TA on the BKB. We can't really do anything but the Death Ward. Marge getting tons, tons of damage. Four of instantly Yule stepped here, but Cast, he's dying. And Marge tanked it all up like a man. And it's a it's a 2 0 trade already. MVP is just cleaning house. Jo is trying to do the best, trying to go on March here, but at the moment, even his split shots, it's just not enough damage. And March, he doesn't care. Turning the back to Jo, and they're all dead. It's a full five man wipe. This started as an aggression of Rave, but in the end, it felt like MVP was the aggressor. My god, March. What a guy. Of course, Rave, they were focusing literally into the back of the Bristleback the entirety of the fight. I don't think they got like one right click into the face of him. Of course, Forev coming in as well, jumping in at the exact right time. And TA, he pretty much exactly had buyback gold. If he didn't have buyback, it wouldn't have been half as easy, but they're going for some aggression. Pounce on Chao, it needs some follow up forever. Gonna have to escape now. Mystic Snake is there, no Shadow Dance, takes a lot of damage. So that pounce was definitely too eager. Had they just stood and right click at the tier 3, I think it would have been easy tower kill, but they still take an extremely good fight plus a Roshan. Yeah, this is Roshan. This is Roshan with cheese. They they lost five. They used two buybacks. And now they're exactly where they started, like three minutes off, pinned down to their base. And that is giving MVP even more of an advantage. You see the graph is just exploding at the moment, heading towards 14k, 16k maybe if it's completely updated. And now this is going to get just worse because at the moment MVP, they know they have the full map control. They have two jungles, three lanes to farm with, and Rave doesn't dare to go out. Because right now, if you get engaged in a fight and you lose it, there's no way, just no way you come back on this game because without the buybacks, there's just... Yeah, it's at least one Rex, if not even two, probably two. So Rafe has to really be careful. They have to fight on a high ground and, and have to try to come back on this one. Otherwise, this is just not working out. Yeah, it's going to be just so much harder for Rafe to do damage as well unless they get PKBs. I mean, Crystal is there on J.O., but there are going to be double, uh, not a Bristol Blade, but I'm saying double Heaven's Halberds. One on the I.O., Bristol back going to finish his own as well now. Does purchase it up, doesn't leave enough for a buyback. But with them pushing all the lanes out, there's not even too much of a threat of Rave being able to push counter access because all the tier 2s are still up oh, as well. Look at the double damage. Double damage TA baiting out the cliff top already. Like just because of that using the cliff here, that is really bad news. Which means from now on no cliff and the split push could actually start. The Slark, to be honest, right now in the current state with what he has, he can just go and push top while we have a full assault mid. And I think they would even do 4 and 5 pretty fine while the Slark is split pushing. I think. That's what they are going for at the moment, yes? Like, as I'm talking about it, they actually do this. So, Slark being settled still top. There is, of course, some, some counter push coming in there, but 4 is like, okay, guys, I don't care. You're not coming out of your base. March being flat up here in the mid, taking, of course, some damage already. There's the stun. There's a Maledict as well. So, well, March getting quite some damage here. Maledict stacking and stacking by top. We also have 4 working on the tower. And March, no, this won't be enough for, for anything. He's still getting so much damage here. Now, oh, he's slowed by... Well... Finally, the IO is bringing him back to the fountain, but the split push is just working. Look at the tier 3 top. 
It's going slowly, but steadily down. And we also have the TA joining the fight. But oh, there's the swap here. Viper Strike. He's trying to blow up Ninja Boogie, but this time he's way faster. And now with all the slows and everything, is it happening? Yes, it's happening, but it's only the H's. Top, the split push. Four of It's just continuing. While in mid, the prison back is working on a tower. He doesn't care. He's standing in fire. He's standing next to the death ward. But who cares? TA is coming back in as well as Heen. And they're going to blow up here. Ninja Boogie this time. He's going to pay for it, though. But not after he already went for the melee racks, uh, the range racks. So top tier 3 tower lost, range racks lost. Like, it's just not working out at the moment. Heen is trying to do something here, but in the end, he's just going to die. I don't think he's going to make it out. This is enough damage. But, well, it's a 2 for 1 trade. And objectives done. 3 tier 3 towers and the range racks. I'm worth not it? too sure if just getting the towers and the range racks is even worth such a trade. I mean, you lost the ages. I cannot help but feel like if MVP had actually gone S5, that they would have been able to just completely overpower Rave. I mean, yeah. they have three extremely farm cores at this point. But, but to be honest, if you compare the trades, I mean, you, at, at this point you have two options. Go full out 5 men, maybe win the fight against Rave not having the full buybacks, but you also might lose it and then you are forced into buybacks and suddenly you find yourself in, in an awkward position. So this is kind of a high stake game. What they do right now, sure, they might lose one or two heroes, but in the end, in the end, it's just a safe trade, because look what Forif is doing, he's going even for more, like rain tracks going down here, and I don't think they can stop him, there's sure a stun on Forif, oh never mind, actually with the BKB on, uh, he's making it out, maybe he's even gonna get a kill here on Chrissy, shouldn't be a problem, he still has Yule Scepter, but yeah, the Slark Ultimate just coming through, but he's still going for Chrissy, where's the pounce, oh, beautiful timing on that Yule Scepter, but still, does he make it out, actually, this is quite risky what he's doing here, where is the damage, we need more damage, and Slark is going down, that's quite a misplay. That's epic quite a misplay. Fail, man. Epic fail. Two pounces missed. Of, of course, okay, one was by beautiful use scepter of the Chikiro. But he was like, yeah, I have a cheese. I am so freaking safe. I'm not going to die here. At least he got the range rack. So two lanes <laughs> will slowly be pushing in. But th th they lost quite a lot just for range racks, to be honest. But just still, like, coming it back to... It was also a like... 10 second BKB charge. Yeah, but coming back to the, the question is, like, is this really worth it? Sure, they just lost three heroes just for a trade of Ninja Boogie, but, I mean, three tier three towers, which means all the lanes are open. If they just come back and make the same thing, and they get enough chip damage to get, like, melee Rex down against a team that doesn't have Cliff for another minute and 25 seconds, I think they can just finish this game without having a crazy fight. Sure, the Slark, that was kind of a weird play, but in the end, it's 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 just... Uh, this is not what turns a game around. Like experience, sure, Rafe got something off there, but no, Rafe has to has to be aggressive right now. But I don't think they can. I don't think they can leave their base because if they leave their base and just one lane is pushing in, we we didn't even consider the option of, for example, relocate split push. That might, for example, happen. Like TA plus IO at the moment, they can take out Arax within less than five six seconds. So you need to come and TP and stop them. But they can just ignore it, pop the BKB, and repeat this all the time, every relocate. But look what's happening here at the moment. Heen going really balls. Oh. Blink Dagger just threw the entire team. You have to, man. You have, you're an ogre, my child. There's no way but to go aggressive for you. But the split push going on at the same time as also Rave, they're effectively pinned down to, into their own base. I mean, range tracks, they don't give too much momentum to a lane, so that's nothing too just huge to worry about. But Chrissy with the smoke, gonna blink forward, you will set it onto the correct target. Macrofire, just look at the length of that. But Ryzen is gonna take an easy fall, and without Yayo March, might get caught. I have got it swapped back as well. I think the slows might be enough, although he's pretty speedy with just enough stacks of Warpath. A nice Ice Path, Maladict as well, dual breath, Death Ward, everything is used, but Forever comes in into cast, gets the Abyssal Blade stun. And well, he's gonna continue. Onto Cheyo, maybe never mind Channel Dance away instead. He's gonna get the pounce out, should be safe, but the slows, March, he's coming back into the fight. Gonna use the Heaven's Halibur onto Cheo, no right clicks coming out from him. Viper in the meantime brings down QO, so everything's still going on forever. Dropping low, no shadow dance for him, Cheo might even win the man fight, never mind, there's the cheese. And Cheo, he's gonna be screwed because of that cheese. And four yep. heroes down, Medusa, no buyback. Medusa, no buyback, this is four down and the buyback on a TA, BUTing in, I think, and now he's finishing bottom lane. While all this was going on top, you couldn't have the camera on two fights, but yeah, we had actually the TA being killed, but they got Ninja Boogie kill instead, so they're just gonna finish the objective gaming here, and uh, like even the buyback heroes are dying now, four of still alive, that's really bad news. This is GG, it's a guaranteed GG, there's nothing, absolutely nothing Rave can do. This split push attempt of MVP, 
it's it's just working out at the moment. And Chrissy is going to be the last victim of war here between Rave and MVP. The I-League qualifiers, they're going to end with Rave having a good game, but MVP having just a better one. Yeah, MVP, they, I think, won every single series 2-0. So really just dominating performance throughout the entire qualifiers and they deserve just win for them. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Uh, MVP, they definitely had, I don't know, the, the first draft, I think the first game was uh, was an issue of drafting. And the second game was just picking greedier and going late game. Everything we set in the draft became true, like with against three cores and of course the mobility and the split push options they have. It just went their way. But guys, iLeague is not over yet. There's still two more qualifiers coming. Uh, the semi-Chinese or uh, the semi-pro Chinese qualifiers are coming. We're not going to cast them. And they're also not going to be on ticker sites. But of course, you can still follow them because it's free on Dota TV. But the pro Chinese uh, qualifiers are coming starting tomorrow, uh, the 15th of December. The, the format is going to be different. It's going to be best of two in the group phase sort of format. And yeah, we're going to update you on our... Facebook and Twitter about it like we also make on our subreddit on Reddit like we're gonna post you uh, the schedule and everything but yeah it's gonna start tomorrow at 12 CET and 14 CET with uh, Bihar tomorrow starting against DK and an SPG like nice Chinese Dota from tomorrow on till Christmas even till after Christmas we're gonna have iLeague here on Hefla TV it's gonna be amazing so I hope you join in and that's pretty much it for Today? No, oh, lies. No. We have Arcanis versus First Departure coming out in 58 oh, yeah. minutes from now. Well, 56 if you hear it on stream. It's at uh, 15 CET, 22 SGT. The playoffs for the Join Dota League Asia. So that's going to be coming out in about an hour. Going to keep the stream running. So see you in an hour for Arcanis versus First Departure. And thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. If you liked it, you can follow us on our social media, Facebook and Twitter, Hefla TV, for more I League and more everything. And so guys, this is going to be it for this game. See you in about an hour. Bye-bye.